Who do you know that has an anger issue? Or maybe you have the anger issue yourself. Uh, today I want to talk about what are the reasons that we get angry? What are, the, what are the common threads that pretty much underlie every bit of, of anger that we have? And then what does scripture say about when we experience those moments? Now some of us, we're so used to trotting this line of going from zero to 100 over and over again that li- literally in our brain there's like these well-worn pathways where now whenever something slightly irks us, we go straight to 100. We go straight to like the red zone in our head. And others of us, we've chosen again and again to not act on those moments of irk or not act in those moments where we feel like something is unfair. And so we have a more even keel, but we shouldn't make the mistake of thinking that there's just some naturally angry people and naturally calm people. It really is the idea of people who are naturally angry or who are angry people are ones who have chosen for long enough to continually feed that emotion that their brain teaches them to go there right away. Likewise, there's people who have constantly taken that emotion and controlled it, and so their brain's much more even keeled. Now, anger's kind of like a belly button, right? You've got like Audi anger and any anger. And Audi anger is lashing out and screaming and rage and saying things that you didn't mean to say. And then any anger is not super helpful either. It's the kind of anger that uh, it festers and it boils and then it comes out in passive aggressive ways. And they're both equally inappropriate when it comes to what scripture says. Here's what the book of Proverbs says, chapter 19, verse 11. A wise person is slow in their anger and it is to one's glory to overlook an offense. So it's as if scripture talks about, it's saying there, there's a moment to get angry. It says slow to anger. It doesn't say not anger. But then it says, but if it's simply a matter of you being offended by something, there's actually a lot of wisdom in just overlooking that offense. I kind of, uh, I was thinking about this today. What what gets us angry? And the three things I think are when we want to when we want to protect something that we love, when we want to control something that we can't, or we want to preserve an image of ourselves that we want to have. So first of all, when we want to protect something that we love, that's where righteous anger can come in, right? If someone comes and they're trying to kidnap my kid and I righteously respond in anger and preserve my son or my daughter's health, then that is a righteous form of anger, right? I'm protecting something that I love. I have a right to protect it. I have a duty to protect it and protecting it and God's will can go in line. Other times we protect something that we love and we got to ask ourselves the question, should I be protecting this thing? Because maybe you're playing a game of football, or you're playing a game of basketball, or you're playing video games, or you're having like a family game night with another family, and and you feel like someone cheated. And so what you love is fairness. What you love is justice. And in those moments, we have to ask ourselves the questions, does it really matter my concern for justice right now when everyone now thinks I'm a bigger jerk than I ever have been before? And it's those moments where we have, to, we have to do that math because in real time, it might feel like, Uh, But I'm a fan of justice. I'm a fan of this. And in those moments, I think scripture says, when can we step back and look at the situation and say, if I'm right right now versus if I'm wrong right now, what am I going to lose if I'm right? Because I'm going to be right at the top of my voice and the end of my rope. Whereas I might be able to overlook this offense and go, not a big deal. We also might get angry because uh, there's, there's an image of ourselves that we're trying to uphold that someone comes at us and they might say something false about us and or they might come and they might um, criticize something that we've made or, or criticize something that they believe wasn't true that we've said. And instead of calmly responding, we want to preserve our image so quickly that we try to belittle them or we try to lash out against them. Uh, and then I think outside of just protecting <clears throat> something that we love and preserving an image of ourselves that we have, we also sometimes want to control something that we can't, and that can lead to anger too. When there's things that someone's cruising down the side of the road and on the shoulder when everyone else is stuck in traffic, and we think that everyone should be in the same line. Everyone should be doing exactly what I'm doing. And when we can't control them, when we're able to control something, it's it's really, really difficult to get angry at it unless we get angry at ourselves because it was within our wheelhouse to fix. When we can't, sometimes our only response to freak out and think, I have to get to level 11 with my emotions because I can't really do anything that's going to be productive right now. In all those things, maybe ask ourselves the question, is this right now worth it? What does helpful anger look like versus unhelpful anger? Maybe just taking an extra second today and contemplating, where is anger showing up in my life and where can I take a step back or overlook an offense? See you tomorrow.